We are more than halfway through the book of Exodus, Shemot. Exodus is a smaller book than Genesis, so it's not too surprising that we are just about done with it and we're getting through it sooner just because it's a smaller book. This book lays out a good foundation about the covenant, instructions, the feast, and much, much more. Mount Sinai has so many lessons that we can personally learn from in regards to what to do and what not to do when it comes to building a relationship with Jehovah. Welcome to Reconcile the Kingdom, where we're working towards becoming a harmony of the whole word of truth. My name is Patrice Robinson, and I appreciate you coming by today, hitting that subscribe button, comment, and share this video as a way of you showing your support. We're going to go through the significant events of Exodus chapters 28 through 30. Chapter 28. Here we obtain information about the priestly garments. He specifically asks for Aaron and his sons because this is the bloodline that the priests and high priests will come from. Um, although there's a, a tribe of Levites, um, Aaron's bloodline is the priestly bloodline. And the other Levites have different roles within the tabernacle and, and things like that to do. This is also where you see um, that Jehovah fills workers with the Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom to make the beautiful glory garments, including the tabernacle. Um, the garments for Aaron and the high priest, um, is, is, we have the instructions on the breastplate, the breast piece, um, the ephod. we have the robe, we have the tunic, we have the instructions of the onyx stones. They had to, grade, had to engrave the names of the children of Israel according to their birth. Now, this did not include the adopted sons of Joseph, Manasseh, and Ephraim. So their name wasn't on the stones. And we have the breastplate of judgment that had the 12 stones on there to represent the 12 sons. And again, that did not include the adopted sons from Joseph. There are plenty of instructions. Even the turban had to have the engraved signet that says, Holy to Jehovah. And there was instructions about undergarments. Chapter 29. The priest must be concentrated by, uh, by blood, eleven bread, among other things. Aaron and his sons will have the priesthood as a permanent statue. Now, this is the earthly priesthood. See, this is why Yeshua um, was after the order of Melchizedek. He couldn't be a part of the high priest of the earthly priesthood, according to the Levites, because Yeshua is from the tribe of Judah, so he wouldn't even qualify as a priest um, in the bloodline or a high priest because he was from the tribe of Judah. The scriptures go on with the um, offerings and the food for the ordination. Again, there is so much in this chapter to read. Um, it's just, it's a lot. So the first steps was taking on the role of the priest and the role of the tabernacle. So these are important steps to learn for, for Aaron and his sons because this is what they're gonna be doing. Chapter 30. We have another furniture item uh, for the tabernacle, the Mishkan. The altar of incense. Not only do we get the instructions to build it, we also get instructions on what not to do. Like, do not offer strange incense on the altar. Burnt offering, uh, male offering, and more. Don't do strange things. We also see this census. We have this um, funds to um, atone to, for children, for, for other children, for those that are 20 and older. The people had to give to prevent a plague um, that would, um, as they do the census and accounting. So, they had to 
give an atonement money to prevent a plague. Um, and also we have um, the holy oil in the incense in this chapter. So these three chapters, again, as usual in Exodus, has a lot in it. And I always say, thankfully, this is our first cycle. And I, I'm not pretty sure in our second cycle, we will learn more and on and on and on. So the focus is the priestly garments. Um, the priestly garments, I must say there's a lot to say, much to focus on, especially the Holy Spirit when it comes to the spirit of wisdom. But I want to focus on the wisdom of creating a uniform to identify the person in service. The garment's creation with every detail to what material to use and undergarments. Wow. This will show how much Jehovah, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Israel, cares so much about us. He not only tells us what the preacher wear daily, doing services, doing the Day of Atonement, but he tells us how to protect us from him because of his holiness. His holiness can kill someone who is out of line. Just as he is very detailed in the creation of this world, he was just as detailed and the creation of the priestly garments. I decided to include a picture of the garment and you just, just to view and take it in. And these instructions came from Jehovah. These instructions for this priestly garment came from God himself. Let that sink in for a moment. So each item that this priest is wearing from the crown of his head all the way down to his undergarments, this did not come from man. This did not come from Moses. These instructions came out of the mouth of Jehovah. He showed him an image in heaven of how the priest should be dressed and how to make each item. This design came from Almighty himself. Remember, Aaron and his sons could not just put these garments on. They, they didn't, they couldn't just put it on and go to work just like you and I do. Um, they had to be sanctified, consecrated for seven days. They had to go through a process of being washed. Now, some would say this was a baptism. This was an immersion in water. Um, some would say they was just washing in the basin lever. So whatever it was, they had to be washed and concentrated in. So let's not forget that the, the blood that had to be shed for their sins. So all of this ordination process included a meal and more. This is how beautiful, how gorgeous, how wonderful, how a blessing Jehovah has been always. And I don't think we let it sink in into our minds that the Torah, the tabernacle, the priestly garment, how to live our lives, those instructions didn't come from man. Those instructions came from Jehovah himself. Next week, we will be doing Torah chat points from Exodus chapter 31 through 33. As always, man does not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Jehovah. And I will see you on Saturday at 10 o'clock a.m. as we continue Hanukkah versus Christmas. And I will see you next Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Thank you.